Hey there, Mr. Wilford here. I just want to go through and talk a little bit about the first week and some of the things that you're going to do this week. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, take a look at the first three sections. Those are the sections that we're going to do of chapter one. And uh, then I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that you want to make sure that you do this first week. Um, so uh, let me just talk a little bit here about uh, your online textbook. This is what it looks like when you open up to chapter one, section one. And, and the first section that we're going to look at here are uh, sets of numbers. Before I get going into uh, some of the material here, I just want to uh, remind you that when you open your online textbook, you will see uh, these links on the right hand side. And these are important links. Um, you can see that you can see the book here uh, pretty well, but if you want to get a clearer picture of what uh, this is saying here, depending upon what your computer is like, um, if you click on this English link here, you will get uh, a PDF page of this uh, page in the book. There are also uh, lesson tutorial videos, example one, two, and three. They're different examples, little video lessons. Um, so if you're not quite understanding something uh, as you read through the textbook uh, or um, as I'm explaining it, it's always a good idea to go back and maybe look at some of these examples. They're done um, really well and, and um, you want to make sure that you take the time to look at some of those if you need to. Uh, and then for every section there's an interactive practice quiz. This is just practice, but these are kind of nice because you can self-check uh, to see your, your understanding and, and what things are like. Um, so I would take the time to, after each section, to maybe try uh, one of these interactive practice quizzes. Uh, as you go through uh, each week, typically we do uh, two to three sections each week. Kind of depends on the week. Um, there are discussion assignments. There will be online um, assignments that you're going to do. There will be book assignments, and I'll talk about those in just a second, um, that you're going to do and, and submit. And then uh, also, uh, typically, we end the week with uh, a quiz or a test, depending upon where we're at in the chapter. So um, you'll kind of get the flow of how the week goes once we, once we get going here. Uh, and then, of course, if you have any questions, just please let me know, and I will surely help you out. Uh, also, there might be some other different assignments thrown in um, along the way. Uh, so just kind of watch for those, but typically that's the flow of, of each week. Uh, so let me just talk a little bit. Again, I'm just going to go through the first three sections here and just talk briefly about what, uh, what to expect. In section one, we talked about sets of numbers. So this is kind of the beginning of it all. This is setting up our, um, our sets of numbers that we're going to be talking about. When we talk about a set of numbers, we're talking about a group of numbers uh, and then those numbers, those items, are called elements of the set. Uh, within each set, we can have what we call a subset. And if there is nothing in the set, then we call it the empty set. And uh, that's symbolized with a little circle with a line through it. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that we all understand and are all on the same page as far as our number system. So we have real numbers here. Uh, which basically we break into two parts. We call them rational numbers and irrational numbers. Now, irrational numbers are kind of the weird ones. Those are the ones that um, the decimals go on forever. They never repeat. Numbers like pi or the square root of 2, weird numbers that you don't see a whole lot of. And then over here we have rational numbers, and then these are broken into uh, different kinds of subsets. Uh, we have natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and they kind of build on each other. Uh, and those are those are the nicer numbers, I guess. Those are the numbers that you use most often in the real world. Uh, numbers like that, like fractions or decimals that maybe re that have uh, a repeating decimal or that end, things like that. Um, and so the first part of this uh, uh, section here, what you're really just doing is kind of ordering and classifying the real numbers. So making sure that you understand um, which numbers are less than or greater than um, than other numbers. Um, so you'll see as you go through this, uh, this online textbook, you'll see different examples. So be sure to read through those. I'm not going to read through each one of those. Um, one of the things that we will do is, is um, 
try to list numbers and, and depending upon our list of numbers we might use different notations. Um, we might use words. Okay, uh, Here's an example using words of, of a set of numbers. Um, roster notation. Roster notation has the little squiggly uh, brackets here and we list those numbers out. Um, if it's a finite set, in other words it has an ending, a beginning and an ending, um, then roster notation is sometimes okay to use because we can list out all those numbers. If we have an infinite set, that means it goes on forever and ever, um, then we would not want to use roster notation uh, because there's just too many numbers to list. So we might use uh, something called interval notation. And um, this is uh, an example here, um, numbers between 3 and 5. Well, there's, there's a lot of numbers. There's 4, but there's also 3.5, 3.6, 3.678. Um, you know, there's a lot of numbers in there. So we wouldn't want to list those all out, so we use interval notation. If you do not include the 3 and the 5, then you use the rounded brackets. If you want to include the 3 and the 5, if these were closed dots, then we would use square brackets. And you'll see that in the next page here. Um, and we can also go to negative infinity or, or positive infinity as well. So um, you can look here at some different examples here. These are This is a really good table. Uh, using interval notation, the inequality symbolism, words, number lines, um, and, and some other examples as well that you can read through. Uh, there is something that they talk about here called set builder notation. Um, this is really kind of a, a formal way to write it in math, a set of numbers. Um, you can take a look at that and, and see what that um, talks about here. Basically it's it's symbolism for a lot of different things here. Basically you want to kind of look at this part in here. That's really the important part. Um, so it's not you know that critical to go through some of that stuff. Um, you can kind of read through these examples and see what they mean here. Um, but the idea here is that we're talking about sets of numbers and we're talking about how do we write sets of numbers, different ways, different methods. Uh, we have words, roster notation, interval no notation, and set builder notation. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, some you're going to see, some are more common than others. Um, and uh, as when you get to the problems here, and again, when you when you look at your uh, your in your online class uh, in class, you're going to see um, there are uh, homework assignments called book assignments, and basically it's going to tell you the page to go to and the problems to do. Um, and there are a variety of ways to, to submit that assignment. Um, just make sure that you read that, uh, and, and if you have any questions with those, please let me know. Okay, um, so I just want to continue on here and go through uh, and talk about section 2 and 3 here real quick. I don't have a lot of time left, uh, so I'll try to make it quick. Section 2 is all about properties of real numbers. Uh, so we have our set of real numbers, and then we now need some rules or properties that go along with them. Um, we have uh, all of these listed here, properties of real numbers. Uh, and some of these actually make uh, a lot of sense. Some of them are pretty basic um, that, that really you do probably all the time, but you don't really think of it as a property. But here they are listed, um, the additive identity property, 3 plus 0 equals 3. So basically, if you add 0 to a number, you get the same number. Uh, multiplicative identity uh, property, if you multiply by 1, you get out the same number. Additive, additive inverse property is where you add the opposite, you get out 0. Multiplic multiplicative inverse property is when you add the inverse of a number. So 8, the inverse is 1 over 8, you get out 1. Um, so there are going to be some problems you're going to go through there. Uh, look at some examples, and, and they talk about some of the different uh, properties there. Then uh, we have uh, um, additional properties of real numbers, addition and multiplication. And again, a lot of these you probably do all the time. You don't really just think of them as a property, though. Uh, closure property, um, where you add or multiply numbers, you get out a different number. A sum or 
uh, a product there. Commutative property, you can flip-flop um, the order of adding or multiplying. Associative property has to do with grouping, so you can group the numbers in different orders. Distributive property, this is a big one. Um, you want to make sure that you understand the distributive property. That gets used quite a bit. Basically, if you have A times in parentheses B plus C, you can distribute that A to the B and to the C. And it looks like this. You've probably used it before. You've probably heard of it before. Here it is again uh, the distributive property. It's a pretty important property. That one we'll use quite a bit. Um, some different examples to look through here. Uh, just kind of checking your knowledge on the whole, on the properties there. Uh, more examples um, there as well. And then uh, you'll see the uh, assignment page here. Make sure that you uh, look again at your uh, assignment for this section. And then quickly I want to go through uh, some square roots in section 3. Uh, when we talk about square roots or radicals, um, really in this section we just talk about square roots. We don't do a whole lot with other types of radicals or roots. Um, there's some terminology here that you want to make sure that you look at. Uh, we don't get too crazy about some of this stuff uh, as far as the different numbers and the, and the terms, but there they are. Um, you have to be kind of careful with square roots because your calculator will do them a little bit differently depending upon the type of calculator you have. So please be careful with that. Uh, a lot of times you can, you can estimate square roots using a calculator. If you have a good calculator, I would certainly just jump to that right away uh, instead of doing this stuff here. Um, and then uh, there are also a couple of properties here that we want to be aware of. The product property, basically you can take a number like the square root of 12 and break it up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 multiplied. 4 times 3 is 12. And then the square root of 4 actually is 2, so that kind of comes out of the radical. And we can simplify that like, uh, like this, 2 times the square root of 3. Uh, the quotient property, same kind of thing. You can actually break the square root up into the top and to the bottom, and then uh, simplify or reduce that if you can. So the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 16 is 4. Um, so a lot of these in the beginning here are pretty simple problems where you can break them up um, and you can use these properties to, uh, to simplify the radical. Now again, don't be shy. Use a graphing calculator or a calculator that has a good square root button on it. And you can simplify these numbers pretty easily that way as well. We might as well use the tools if we have them. Uh, there is something called rationalizing the denominator. Make sure you take a look at some of these examples. Basically what they're saying here is that you never want, a ha want to have a radical or a square root in the denominator. And you can see here that we have a square root of 3 in the denominator. So they do some things here. Uh, multiply by the square root of 3 top and bottom so that if you multiply across the bottom, you get square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. It comes out of the radical. And then they simplify the numerator here. So um, this actually is called rationalizing the denominator. It's a little bit tricky, so make sure you take some time to look that over. Um, and if you have questions, let me know with that. Again, use a calculator to check your answers. And then we have um, like radicals. You can add and subtract like radicals. Like radicals are the square root of the same number. Um, and so look at a couple of these examples as well. Uh, and if you have like radicals, then you add and subtract them. Just kind of like treat them like a variable. Uh, treat them like a like radical because then you just add the numbers in front and that square root of 2 just comes along for the ride. Okay, uh, and that about does it for um, this section as well. Uh, and that's really week one, these three sections here. Um, again, don't be afraid to go through and look at some of these links on the right. They're very cool, they're very important, and they will help you out. And if you have any other questions at all, please let me know. Thanks. Have a great week.